uh, a very good morning to all of you and uh, we welcome you to the 29th session of icf sunday webinar series our topic for today is a uh, happiness for school books and our speaker for today is soma bhattacharya and i will ask her to introduce herself and i would request the other participants to please mute themselves so that we can listen clearly to the speaker and then later on look at her presentation yeah thank you vivek ji and good morning to all of you it's a pleasure to be with the like minded people uh, early in a, early in the morning it's a cold december morning and uh, it's it's still november but it feels like we are still in december we were we are already in december in uh, in delhi yeah like vivek ji said uh, about a brief introduction to myself um, i'm shoma patacharya and uh, i've been with this whole business of book making for now quite some time um i started with the open school where uh, uh, where uh, i learned how to make self instructional materials for out of school uh, students thereafter i moved to the cambridge university press and then to uh, to macmillan macmillan i was always with school books um i uh, my first uh, stint with macmillan was between 2008 to 2013 and um, and after that for family reasons i quit my full time job and i worked as a, um, a consultant with mcgraw hill for two years uh, but again in 2015 i went back to uh, to to macmillan uh, again back to macmillan schools um and i continued in the position till about till 2018 december but in 2018 december uh, i decided that well i needed a break and i needed to do things that i wanted to do by myself and so january 2019 onwards till date i uh, i work privately as a freelance consultant for publishers who need my help and uh, and in my spare time i spend time with family my other is gardening baking cooking so that's what i am so that's what i am presently uh, doing and so here i stand in front of you um with um, with my understanding what school books is all about and i thought i should share it with you um, that school books has given me enormous joy enormous happiness it has given to me a sense of identity while it has also given me a chance to 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 put down things that i believe in i believe what should be there in school books and what should go down to the next generation of uh, users so that's how this whole concept of um, happiness called came about um i will be starting my ppt and uh, my my Presentation has got two parts to it. I don't think that we can right away jump to school books without understanding a little bit about what material writing and material production is all about. I will keep my presentation very, very general because I will be touching largely upon the procedures, which are very common across all the subjects. My discipline is ESP, uh, and while I will. naturally uh, have a, a leaning towards elt material writing elt material production but i don't think that the um, issues or uh, the uh, procedures or the uh, or the problems are very different in different subjects so i socialize start my ppt vivek ji yes sir can you hear me sir yeah you can start And Okay, so right. So I will start with my PPT, and like I said, the first few slides will focus generally on what material writing is all about. And before I get on to uh, issues in school books, I have my little daughter who's who's helping me. So you might just see her. She she will be helping me. Put on top. Yeah. 
Is the PPT visible? Yes, yes. It's visible? Yeah, it's visible. All right. So there we are. A happiness called school books. Now, as I said, I will begin with what material writing is all about. So we first need to understand what are materials. Anything that gives away information is constitute materials. So materials can be course books, they can be audiovisual programs, they can be flashcards, they can be posters, they can be maps, diagrams, charts, toys, anything that gives away content, anything that gives some amount of learning and information constitutes materials. And naturally, material will be different for different age groups, will be different for the different purposes that we constitute the materials. So, so adult materials will look different from child's materials, and the child's material will look different from, let's say, neoliterates materials. So what are the factors which are involved in material development? There are a few common factors which are there in material development. First of all, the client. Who is our target group? Like I said, the target group, is it school children? Is it adults? Are they corporate clients? Are they new literates? Are they first time learners? Are they, um, are they um, second generation learners? Are they expat learners? Who are they? That will determine how your material should be. Then the market, where are they situated? Where are they situated? What is the geographical condition? What is the socioeconomic condition? What are the political compulsions that they live under? That's the market. The purpose, what is the purpose in creating these materials? Is it a course book or is it enrichment material? Is it for skill development? Is it for further for uh, for um, studies? Is it for upward mobility? So all of that put together determines the purpose. Based on the purpose, we get on to our method. Methods can be either course team method, author driven, or they can be churned out in workshop. Now, what do I mean by each of these? A course team method essentially means that there is a panel of writers, a group of writers who get together to fulfill certain objectives. The objectives of writing the materials to fulfill certain skills and sub skills. And this course team may be headed by a senior person who knows the market, who knows the client, and who's very clear about the objectives of this course writing. If it is author driven, it's very clear that there's just one author or two authors who know very clearly what content should be there, who the clients are, what the market is, and accordingly they design the courseware to achieve their objectives. There is another method by which materials can be developed, and that is through the workshop method. The workshop is where all possible authors, editors get together in a workshop in a mode. They sit together, brainstorm, and create the materials. This method is rare. It's not always used. It is used in circumstances where your time frame is very small but you do have the money to spend. And so you invest in a, in a workshop method because at the end of the workshop method, you will know that you will have your content ready for your clients to use. And most importantly, through all of this, you cannot reach out to your clients, you cannot capture your market, you cannot fulfill your objective. Neither will any method work if you're not sure of your budget. There is always a budget constraint which comes in when materials are developed. You have to be within your budget and you have and these budgets are most often most often approved before the project comes on now what guides the content 
focusing on school uh, book making, school content making, there are two principal factors that guide content. One is our policy. The policy framework on standard learning outcomes. What do we mean by that? We mean our government and our federal uh, structure dictates that certain learning outcomes are achieved at the end of every class or at the end of every level of learning. So for example, in our country, we have the NCRT as the apex body to determine our learning outcomes at the end of every level. So those are the policy frameworks that we necessarily need to follow when developing materials for school children. This will, I must mention that policy is not just something which is done, uh, uh, I mean, out of the blue. There is research, there is well amount of market uh, research which goes into it, coupled with academic research, which, uh, which takes place before any policy document is framed. The NCRT being the apex body in our country to uh, to, to, to guide school books making. Uh, the NCRT reaches out to many, many, many intellectuals of the country, not just academicians, theoreticians, even school teachers, um, people who work at the grassroots level, NGOs, etc. When before they get down to framing their policy. So policy is backed by research and it therefore makes sense to follow those policy frameworks uh, meaningfully when making the materials. And of course, the customer needs. So what are the customer needs? We must understand the customer needs first and fit into the policy framework before we make the materials. Now, once we've decided that we will make uh, content we need to know how to structure our uh, content because every structure will not be the same. The structure will be different for different uh, client groups. An adult's book, adult's product will be different from a child's. Having said that, everything, every structure will depend on the learning outcomes that we expect at the end of the course. So we need to be clear about the end point of a particular courseware. And the learning outcomes will naturally be skills-based. It is important to understand what skills are. Skills are anything that can be measured, that are observable. If at the end, has the child or has my learner at the end of this course been able to fulfill these objectives? If yes, then my learning outcome has been fulfilled. If not, then I need to evaluate why that has not happened. And I need to go back on my um, learning design. That has there been something wrong in my learning design that, that my intentions have not been fulfilled. And thirdly, the third important factor in the design of my learning uh, strategy is the structure, the chapter structure. I call it chapter structure because we are looking at books largely. We are not looking at um, online materials, neither are we looking at digital products, or neither are we looking at um, any other form of uh, courseware at this point of time. So which is why I said the chapter structure. Now, like, we, uh, like in a classroom situation, or when we get down to, uh, to, to, to writing a narrative, we begin and we close. Similarly, our learning design must follow a, it must follow a, a, um, a homogeneous structure. There has to be a gradation upwards. The learning uh, curve necessarily needs to move upwards. And so that will determine the chapter structure. So we will begin with an introduction. And if required, we will split up the content in small learning chunks, not to make it too heavy, to, to, to ensure that learning takes place and to give the learner a sense of success at every stage. We would also like to have maybe short question and answers 
in-text questions or check your progress kind of stuff so that the, the learner knows that he is progressing. So all of that, so it, 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 it depends on us how we would want to structure, uh, structure the chapters. Uh, it goes without saying that every subject will have its own demands. And so therefore, uh, an ELT um, book will look different from a social sciences book. A social sciences book will also look different from a maths book. A maths book will look different from a uh, science book. A science book will look different from a general knowledge book. However, all of them will have their learning outcomes in place. All of them will necessarily have the skills in place. And depending on these, the chapter structure will follow the way it should, depending on the pedagogical necessities of that particular subject. Um, as I said, my discipline being ELT, I will have a leaning towards uh, ELT uh, references, ELT materials. So for those of you who might be interested in knowing a little bit more about um, what it means to create ELT learning materials, you can refer to Materials Development and Language Teaching by Brian Tomlinson. It's a Cambridge University Press publication. It's a seminal work. It's a seminal work. Brian Tomlinson. Um, has had uh, an illustrious career. Presently, I think he's based in Bangkok. He, he made his mark in Leeds, UK, um, in Leeds University, UK, where, where he did enormous amount of work in material uh, uh, development. He's worked all over the world. Brian, along with Hitomi Mashuhara, and, uh, um, and there was a third person, these three people, Ivor Timis, yeah, these three, Brian, Ivor, and uh, Brian, Ivor, and Hitomi. These three uh, people have worked enormously in Africa, uh, Southeast Asia, uh, experimenting on different kinds of materials. Uh, so do get in touch with um, Cambridge University Press for e ELT lovers for this book. Now, now uh, I'm sure there are other um, books as well, uh, or um, journals or publications. Um, in other subjects, like for example, in mathematics, Praveen Sinclair of the in the Rangandi Open University, she has done a lot of work in uh, in maths, uh, experimenting with different methods, different clientele, and uh, so you might like to um, look up her work on 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 maths, what works in maths for different clients. Now, if we've made the materials. We also need to know how to evaluate um, the learning uh, to ensure that there's no washback effect. Evaluation, or to put it more simply, testing, needs to focus on three domains, the cognitive, the affective, and the psychomotor domains. And when we test, when we develop question papers, we test six major categories of knowledge. So, which are knowledge, comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. These are the six major categories which are covered, which should be covered in a question paper. And uh, we fall back on Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's taxonomy is crucial in understanding of what testing and evaluation is all about. A little bit about Benjamin Bloom. Benjamin Bloom, his biological dates 1913 to 1999. He was an American educational psychologist. And his phenomenal work, which is the, 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 uh, the most important work which he edited and which, because of which he's known, um, uh, uh, the, the Bloom's taxonomy has come to be a, a landmark in, in education, is a taxonomy of educational objective, the classification of educational goals. Um, you may also like to, to, to refer to this book. Um, this is called Conducting Tests and Examinations by H.S. Srivastava. This book gives you, will give you a, a, an overview of the different kinds of tests that might be included in school curriculum. 
in school books. It talks about different kinds of tests which are there, closed tests, open-ended, diagnostic, remedial, all of that put together. And why it is important and, and the philosophical background behind each of these tests and what they do to, to learners. It is written by H.S. Srivastava, conducting tests and examinations by H.S. Srivastava. Professor Srivastava was a professor in the NCRT and he did phenomenal work in curriculum evaluation and talent search. And uh, he he was a student of Benjamin Bloom, so he possibly cannot go wrong. And I think conducting tests and examinations, this book by uh, Professor Shivastava is an S. Chand publication. I'm sure it's still there in the market. Now, with all this in the background, this is the background, it's a general background on what uh, materials are on about. I move on to school books as we understand today and as we see them in the market. Um, school books, uh, the, 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 some of the main players in school books market in, um, in India today are among the big names, Oxford University Press, Pearson, Ratna Sagar, Collins has come into the market, Macmillan. Um, there are other players as well. Um, we do have a lot of local publishers like Wordcraft Publishers who have been there in the market for a long time. He's, um, Wordcraft is Delhi based. You also have people from outside Delhi, people like Prism Books in Bangalore. Uh, they've been in the market for a very long time and uh, and they have their fixed clientele and they've been doing some really good work. But if you look at the books, um, you will find that there are two major factors that, that, that guide them. One are the market needs and the other the socioeconomic or the political factors. When we say the market needs, we mean, is the, does the book cater to the CBSE market, the ICSE market, or state courts? If they cater to the state, uh, the CBS market, for example, they would naturally, the books would have to look at what the CBSC states, what are the requirements of the CBSC curriculum. ICSC is very clear. ICSC has its own syllabus and and so the ICSC books will cater to the ICSC uh, syllabus. State boards, each state has its own requirement. So if you're making a, state, uh, a, um, a book, let's say for the, for the Maharashtra board, you'd have to look at what the Maharashtra Academic Council or the Maharashtra mm -hmm. Higher Secondary um, uh, Board book wants uh, to, to find out what they need. Similarly, if you look, if you're if you're looking at Karnataka or Tamil Nadu or or Kerala, or West Bengal or Assam, you'll have to look at what their what their state board wants. But having said that, uh, uh, state boards have their own curriculum. They're not they, the state boards will not deviate much from the basic guidelines which the uh, NCRT has laid down. Within the guidelines that the NCRT has laid down, the state boards may introduce local flavor in their uh, in their curriculum, which may include uh, which may include, let's say, if it is something, if it's a, if it's a geography uh, curriculum uh, from Assam. Now, the, the 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 curriculum for the geography syllabus for Assam may have. A local flavor in terms of let's say the cultivation strategies of Assam or of the Northeast, which will be dependent on the local climatic and the economic conditions. However, the having said that, the overall guidelines would have to would still have to be the same. Um, now, knowing that there is a market and the socio-economic factors that guide the making of the uh, school books, we need to know what is the time to make a new product, a new, I will call it product because I will call it product and not books at this point of time, because we have moved beyond plain books. Books these days are very complex and very sophisticated uh, forms of communication with uh, students. We have not just the books. The book will have uh, links to uh, to internet resources. 
The books will have digital support. They will have additional information in terms of booklets. There will be posters. Um, there will be a whole range of accessories to make the entire learning experience for the child um, wholesome, fulfilling, and challenging as well. So that's why I call it product. But what, what is the time? When do you bring out? I mean, it's not necessary that every year you have to come out with a new product. There is a time frame which is, which is very important for bringing out a new product. First of all, again, it's the market because publishers are commercially driven. And it makes sense for the publisher to make business in his or her investments, through his or her investments. So the time is very important. The time will be guided by market needs. What is the market need? Is there a new syllabus which has come into focus? Or is there a new policy which has come into focus? And which will be the mandate across the country and across all publishers and across all authors and all groups follow. So that will be the market need. And secondly, is there a requirement for a revision? Now publishers will have a front list and a back list. To manage the front list will be the front list will be the new product which they are investing in at that point of time that will be the front list but they would also have a back list if they are an established publisher so managing the front the second list and bringing it to the front list is also another challenge and that is the requirement for the revision why should i revise an old title why either there is a need from the market from my client team that the data needs to be updated or I think that by revising an old title and aligning it to the new syllabus or to the new market needs, I will be able to make better business, right? Or in the process of making that, that particular product, I have run into a problem with my product vision and there have been complaints from my clients because we have trust in you. I mean, after all, what is a brand? A brand is a promise, right? And when a brand brings out a product, it is a promise for a particular level of product. So market needs plus the requirement for a revision determines when should a new product come about. Come about. Now, moving on, when a product is made, there are two sides to it. One is the editorial and the other is the production. Now I'm moving into what happens inside a publishing house inside a publishing house i will not get into the into into sales marketing into all of that because that's not the concern of this particular webinar we will be looking largely at editorial but i thought i should men mention the production as well editorial as we understand is is that department that brings out the product it is that particular department of a publishing house where the content is is churned out, where the content is developed, where the content is revised, where the content is refined, and the learner is uh, kept at the focus. In the editorial, as we all know, there is a hierarchy of editors. School books editorial is different from higher academic uh, editorial. In higher academics, you'll find hierarchies of commissioning editors, acquisitions editors, sponsoring editors. But in school books, you will not find commissioning editors or sponsoring editors or acquisitions editors. Um, school books are driven largely by sales. There is uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the commissioning is done a lot by the maybe the managing editor or the publishing director and the sales. School books editors are a lot focused on their desk, on their work or at the desk, because the work is such, it is so minute and it is and it demands a lot of attention and a lot of focus. Which is why, which is why the uh, which is why it is not possible to have commissioning editors. It is not possible for editors to move out of their desks and go and interact with clients all the time. That is done through teachers and through other contacts that editors come in touch with. 
So you will have, let's say, the entry level in a, in a, in a, in a school editorial would be at the level of maybe an intern or an assistant editor. Then you have an editor, you have a senior editor, you may have a desk editor, you may have then after a senior editor, you may move on to some publishing houses have, let's say, deputy editorial manager, editorial manager. You may have also an assistant managing editor. You have a deputy managing editor. You, all, you may then have a managing editor and then senior managing editor, finally a publishing manager. However, these are all, all designations through all, uh, and, and, and there may not be a uniformity across the publishing houses. Every publishing house chooses a structure that suits its business objectives. In the, uh, in the production, you would have lots of, for those publishing houses like, like Macmillan, for example, continues to maintain its in-house production unit. It's a pre-press unit, which does a lot of um, designing and uh, pre-press work in-house. So there they have a full-fledged uh, pre-press team with DTP workers who can handle um, different kinds of uh, school books. Um, it's it's uh, it's natural that uh, DTP workers may have their preferences. Some may prefer to to handle maths books. Some may prefer to handle social sciences books. Some may prefer to handle ELT books. Some may prefer to handle um, maps school atlases kind of work. It depends on their preferences. Again, their, their preferences, my gut feeling is that grow out of experience. Now, naturally, someone who has been used to handling ELT stuff will, will prefer to handle ELT stuff uh, for a long time because he will have understood editors' languages because the editors also, each, each editor speaks different language. Each, each editor uses a different set of vocabulary. Um, and so they, they, they get used to the editors using mm, a specific vocabulary. Um, also the requirements, ELT books will look different from a social sciences book and a social science book will look different from a map, from, from, from Atlas, for example. So the, so the production would have, again, in the, in, the, in the production also you would have someone who would oversee the entire production. Mm, uh, production. Um, followed by different hierarchies over there and these days of production are uh, these days the the pre-press productions are again uh, very different from what used to be let's say back in 2008-9 i mean I, I i remember at that point of time the the crc would be put in a cd and and it would be sent to the printer so i remember on the day when the on the day when um, uh, 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 a book was being sent for printing to the printing uh, to the printer um, some the, the the person who would be in charge of uh, of of, of uh, you know making the final CD, he would uh, he would uh, post lunch he would start and sing CD cutter CD cutter CD cutter CD cutter time aage, time aage, jaldi karo, jaldi karo, jaldi karo. you know so so that was so that would CD cutter CD cutter meaning well, like you know that come on get your get the final CD ready because it's a uh, post lunch and um, by five o'clock we have to send it across. But now things are different. In my last stint in, um, with, the, with, with Macmillan, things were very different. There was no CD Cato, uh, uh, this thing, uh, lament. There was no such uh, rhythm going CD Cato, CD Cato, CD Cato uh, across the floor. It was when your, your CRC is ready, here is the PDF, verify it, and it is uploaded. It is uploaded for, uh, for the printer to download. So a lot has changed over the years. Editors have also changed their styles of working, but what continues is the uh, but what continues are the basic uh, thrills of the of the editorial, um, working with so many people, working with so many different kinds of editors, uh, different mindsets. That still continues. Um, now I move on to the functions of the editorial. Um, like I said, uh, I'm speaking very generally, but these procedures, I believe, are followed across the subjects. Uh, there is uh, the, the, the editorial starts working before the manuscript even comes in, which includes, uh, which includes uh, the syllabus study, 
which includes like so we can we now again go back to 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 the product timing why do we need a new product or are we going in for a revision so once we have decided that we are getting we are going in for either a revision or a new product then uh, then we we first we we decide on the syllabus we 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 look at the syllabus what does the syllabus state uh once we have seen what the syllabus states we start building on our own thought process and we start uh developing our own product vision the product vision in schools comes largely from within the editorial brainstorms works to develop the product vision because that is what will go out to the author that is what will go out to the sales and the marketing that 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 this is what is coming along then there is a competition study which is done that are there many other books in the market which 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 follow the syllabus what have they done how have they laid out their their content what is it that makes their book sell what is their sales value having looked at all of that a proper competition study is done a literature study is done on 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 all other competing books so which means that if it is a new let's say icsc product or a new cbsc product so a macmillan editor would look at let's say oxford university press pearson books collins books ratna sagar books to look at what others have done how different have they have they uh, looked at topics what is the latest in in grammar and the same trends would be followed with with other subjects as well a social sciences editor would 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 ask for competition uh, titles to see what are the new things that they have put in have they put in let's say sustainable development goals unesco sustainable De unicef's sustainable development goals in in any form if not well i put it in in my books how am i going to put it and how am i going to link it? because how am i going to link it with 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 my topics one difference that i'd like to make here is uh languages are expressions based subjects but social sciences sciences these are largely content driven subjects and so the treatment in both of them would also be different in language books you don't really get into language editing because you would be because it you are dealing with language from the very beginning however in content driven subjects you also have the position of a language editor because those are content driven and so you need to tone down the content or to custom your content to your uh, to your client needs so having said that the competition study um will show what is best uh for the uh, student and so like i said if it is a social sciences uh you may like to the social sciences editor may like to include uh, sustainable development goals but then but so but sustainable development goals are such that these have affected all the subjects so you may find aspects of sustainable development goals um in 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 all the in all uh, school books these days because it is a mandate which has come down and it is important for uh, for our young learners to understand what their rights and privileges are because like i said at the very beginning school books uh also bring forward an ideology it's not just about enjoying the process of learning it is also making them conscious about their 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 position as citizens in in the society once the competition study is done <clears throat> then the editorial normally gets down to developing a sample unit what would that sample unit be based on what the uh, product vision that they have envisaged for the new product uh, they would like to get into making a sample unit which would follow the structure that they think right if you remember at the very beginning i said that there has to be a structure based on the learning outcomes and the skills that you have, that you want to uh, inculcate so that sample unit will follow that structure and this is the sample unit that will be given out to to the authors uh, after a field study is done um editors do it in house based on what they think might be uh, might work but editors aren't school teachers 
So normally what happens is they, the, the, uh, after the editorial has brainstormed and gone through rounds of re revising the sample unit, uh, they send it out to, through their sales and marketing to some, to some uh, mm, uh, uh, client schools to see whether it works or not. And based on their feedback, they'd revise the sample unit and finalize it before getting out to their authors. So this slide talks about more functions. Once we have the field study done and once we are sure that, that this is what um, needs to go into the book, then you, 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 you commission your authors. It's not necessarily that, well, you know, only after field study, you will, you will, you will get into uh, commissioning your authors because, um, because uh, the time frame is very important and time is money for the publisher. So it is, it's quite possible that a lot of things happen simultaneously. So among the other functions of the editorial uh, include commissioning of authors or freelancers. How would you want your books to be developed? Would you have authors or would you prefer to work with freelancers? How would you develop the content? Would you, uh, would, would you want your author to develop the entire lot? Or would you want your author to develop chunks of it or your freelancers to develop chunks of content? These are all the different strategies that, that, that editorial um, uh, works upon, depending on their budget, depending on their objectives, uh, largely budget and the time and the time. Um, I mean, uh, in uh, publishing houses, they say the um, first movers advantage. So they're all at, in a rush to have that first movers um, advantage. So depending on that first mover's advantage uh, formula, it will, a lot of things will work. How, how, how quickly you churn out your content, how quickly you commission your authors and your freelancers, how quickly you write out your content um, is, is the, uh, is the uh, standard. Now, once the content has been written out, the, the uh, process of editing starts the authors or the freelancers write out your content in the, in the manner specified by the editorial. And once they start coming in, the, uh, it's the job of the editors to provide the feedback. Um, uh, now, at this point, let me mention that, that uh, um, normally what happens in, in, in publishing houses is that, uh, you know, where you have a team of editors, let's say five, six editors, um, you cannot really say that, well, this editor will work only on classes, let's say one or two, and that editor will work on classes five, six or seven or, or something of that kind. Um, because of the time frame, because of the time frame that most publishers work on uh, uh, today, uh, whoever is free takes on. Unlike in earlier times, let's say before, um, uh, I mean, um, let's say prior to 2010, maybe things were very different. Uh, things were very different. Uh, and so editors could have a choice that, well, um, an editor might want to say that, well, I prefer to work um, more on, let's say, writing skills book or on reading skills book and less on grammar. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm talking of uh, ENT books, but unfortunately, but but that has but that era is gone. Now we are in a stage where whoever is there has to uh, has to deliver. Uh, so so once the manuscript comes in, then the editors start looking at the manuscript, and that's when all the brainstorming happens. Someone says that ah I like that exercise ah no 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 that doesn't that 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 could have been a, a little better no 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 that there, there there needs to be a gap fill exercise there. Someone else says nothing doing there, there. There has to be an MCQ over there. Another editor says, "Hey, look, this 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 person has given all close-ended questions. Where are the open-ended questions?" So they list down all their feedback. Some editors are very very particular, and they and they even tell the authors and they tell the authors that look here, change this to change this gap fill to an MCQ, change this question to a WH question, change this question to an open-end question. Have a project here have a project here, shift this project there, or turn around this project into a poster. They all manner of editors um, work in the in, in, in um, editorial departments and all of that put together constitutes revising the content. The editor gives the feedbacks, 
uh, feedback to the author or to the freelancers, and that is the revising. Once the revisions come in, revisions can happen up to more than once. Editors just may not accept what, what, what comes in, so they may ask for a second round of revision. And, and it continues till the content is finalized. The content is final and finally then the editors say, okay, so this is what we agree upon. Well, this is how the warm up should be. No, 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 I don't want the UN symbol to be there. The United Nations symbol has to be there. The SDG is not relating to this particular SDG. SDG does not relate to this particular chapter. So move it to, to, to that particular chapter. Another uh, editor might say, how about putting article so-and-so over there to, to tell the child what the child's right is. Uh, it, it, it just continues and continues and continues till the content is finalized. Editors are very, very critical just as much as they're very, very creative. And it's important to keep that in mind when, when we talk of author-publisher relationships. Here are more functions. Again, like I said, I mean, for the purpose of the presentation, I have listed the, them down uh, separately. Often, a lot of these things happen simultaneously. Now, more functions relate now to artwork. When the uh, editors are dealing with the content, then they, uh, they, they, they naturally are already thinking about the, uh, how the book will look. So they start identifying the scope of the artwork. Will this have a composite artwork? Will you have cartoon, cartoons? Will you have, um, well, something else over there? Will, will you have black and white sketches? Black and white sketches are rare for, uh, in, in, in school books. So they keep identifying uh, the scope for the artwork. Once they have zeroed in on artwork, they, the, the, the process of commissioning the artists uh, happen. You may choose to work with uh, individuals or you may choose to work with firms, studios. You may generally experience says that it is easier to work with studios because they have uh, more than one person involved in your project. If it is one artist, then 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 it might become diff difficult because um, because that person may fall ill, that person may have other uh, obligations which may come uh, into into the into the framework, and that may delay your project. So we all we uh, so experience says that it's always preferred to work with um, to work with uh, studios or with organized structures, but that does not in any way mean that you will not work with individual artists. Um, then once you have the artists in place, then you give out the uh, art briefs. What is it that you want? Um, uh, how do you want the artwork to look? Um, uh, in, in, in given our Indian conditions, uh, it is very important that 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 the artworks look very Indian. Again, how 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 should the characters be designed? Will depend on 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 the clientele. What is the socioeconomic background of the students you are uh, looking at? Accordingly, accordingly, the artwork will be. Now, naturally, if you are looking at a, a semi-urban kind of a, a client group, you cannot have a very upmarket looking um, artwork in your book. It will not work. The child will not be able to identify himself with, with the artwork and will naturally lose interest. Um, similarly, if you have too much of artwork, while it may look beautiful, um, uh, while it may look beautiful, the, you may run into the danger of distractions. Um, you may, uh, I, I mean, we have had those kind of experiences where, where we as editors, we, we, we put in lots of artwork. We thought it, it would look beautiful and things like that, but then the teachers came back and said, what are you doing? I can't teach because my child looks at the artwork more than listen to me. So in the next round of revision, we had to reduce the number of artworks. You know, so, th so those are the kind of things that, uh, that, um, that need to be kept in mind. Then, then once you have commissioned the uh, artist, uh, then the artist sends you preliminary sketches. Based on the sketches, you approve for the next level, which is finalize the sketches and start coloring. And then once the color scheme is also approved by the editors, then, then you call for the final artwork and last but not the least, of course, you have to approve the bills. The editorial approves the bills. I must share with you a very uh, funny experience which we had with, a, you know, with an artist. Um, this was 
many years back in my first stint as in 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 macmillan back in 2008 to 2013 when we had this piece from the arabian nights and there was the and there was this teacher about and and there was the story about a teacher uh, who who actually goofed up to be a teacher was not actually a teacher so we commissioned this artist this artist was somewhere uh, from lucknow and this artist we we told him that look we need this brief and we about a of our teacher and this artist he sent a, he he sends in his sketches uh he sends in his sketches and we were uh, we almost had a heart attack when we looked at the um, his his sketches and do you know the reason why because his sketch looked like osama bin laden and we told him that look it won't work and this man he kept on arguing the artist he kept on arguing that no 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 this is what your your brief was because and and in those days you know osama bin laden was still around he kept on arguing that no it seems this is how the, this is what it seems arabian nights um, people look like we said come on stop it i mean you'll be sued in court we can't do it so that was one incident we i i haven't been able to forget another incident which which happened in my last uh, stint in in in, in macmillan we gave out our work to a very well meaning studio somewhere in delhi and and the and all the artworks that came back the eyes were like dots i mean uh, we we for, for us they were dots but the artist head the, the 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 head artist over there said started justifying by 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 lecturing to us on different theories of art that it seems those are acceptable we said how on earth do you expect the child to relate to that i mean how, how can we answer when a client comes back and says that are your eyes like dots or they even open up those dots have to open up and they have to look like eyes you know so these are some of the um, uh, <laughs> what should i say <laughs> these are some of the uh, interesting and very funny things that 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 happened in 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 editorials when we deal with so many kinds of people Uh, now i will show you some uh, some of the beautiful artworks uh, uh, some beautiful page layouts to give you a feel i mean it's a child's world this this page is from a book of prism books bangalore look at the way it has been done please focus on the on the icons that they have used let's learn let's learn books school books so these are all part kind of how a child would dream or oh, look at this it's a child's joy this is from wordcraft publications delhi i mean look at it this boy is up in a uh, orange tree and that must be his sister it's 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 from an elt book so i thought i should show you this picture his sister is going up and to ensure that the girl doesn't fall off the brother is holding her leg look at some more look at it again look at the icons they used fun time let's learn it's it's what a child would dream of look at this this is again from wordcraft publication study i mean these are kind of images which would be there in a child's mind <laughs> funny pictures funny images the funny faces that they make see this is from a grammar book by wordcraft publications so how does all of this happen the primary partnership that happens like i've been talking about the authors the primary partnership is that between the author the editor and the publisher this is a collaboration the editor and the publisher gets in touch with the author and the author delivers what the publisher requires there are many things that 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 go into this particular uh, relationship and i call it primary because i'm not getting into the other relationships that 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 come into play while developing school books which is why i've called it a primary that without the content this is the relationship that ensures the content uh comes out the way it should the author the editor and the publisher the author brings to the table teaching experience experience with students 
um, a vision of what works an understanding of the subject the editor lends to the editor a lens to the author the product vision lends to the editor a lens to the author what the market needs and the publisher brings to the table the commercials it is a win win situation it is a tripartite kind of an agreement between the editor the publisher and the author editor naturally will speak the publisher's voice because it's a lot of money that is at stake it is an investment to bring out something meaningful and the author collaborates with the publisher to fulfill that objective it is a relationship of of trust it is a relationship of respect there will be differences along the way and there has to be because that's how both parties grow the editor also brings to the desk a lot of knowledge the editor is not someone uh, the, the 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 editor is someone who has a university degree and who understands what the subject is all about the editor after all has brought about the project product vision by doing a lot of competition study by 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 conducting the field study and has interacted with the um, with 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 potential uh, users so the editor will have a lot to say and it is also up to the author to respect the editor's word just as much as the editor looks up to the author for growth it's it's a it's a, it's a, it's a relationship of equality in that sense because the it gives a lot of happiness to the editor to grow with the author to learn from the author and when and when the editor grows the publisher grows because if you will grow your work grows and if you your work grows your company grows so it is a very intricate relationship which is shared between the author editor and the publisher which is why i thought this in this particular visual there of collaboration which i downloaded from the uh, from shutterstock it's it has all the words that uh, that i thought work it says success knowledge together learning communication management leadership development all of that put together that's what this relationship uh, is is all about so what are the values in this um, in this collaboration there is teamwork there is trust there is respect they assist each other they fulfill each other's limitations there's an exchange of ideas they inspire each other they share a lot of things together because in the process of developing the content which doesn't happen in 24 hours it happens over a period of time so there is a relationship which develops between the author and the editor um i remember um, you know when i moved for, when i when i moved from mcpillan to 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 mcrohill um someone whom i know very closely um uh, she said to me aha editors are great travelers and we travel with them as well you know so that's the kind of relationship which you develop with your uh, authors or with your freelancers over the years and uh, and it's amazing to find how that relation sustains itself over the years and goes beyond just work and and gets into a whole lot of other shared interests and once you have all these values i call these the core values in in collaboration you have some amount of success and i i would think that these values of teamwork trust respect assist exchange inspire share um goes across uh, even uh, i mean not just between the author and the editor but also among editors themselves across the departments across all the departments who are involved in making that product it is after all a common vision which which runs through uh, which runs through all the people involved in marketing that particular product now 
we let's focus a little bit on the issues that we need to uh, look at mm, when making a product first of all naturally the content what is the right content uh, and for that we fall back on on set guidelines by the ncrt or we also look at uh, if there is anything specific that the client wants to uh, put in level appropriateness the the, uh, the 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 content must be tailor made to the to the client group um, in focus and how should it be level appropriate not just in terms of like for example in 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 elt uh, textbooks the stories or the poems needs to fit into the level of understanding of the child naturally i cannot have let's say a ballad like lochinbar uh, in class 2 i have to keep it for a higher class right and neither can i have a nursery rhyme but, uh, i'm up in class 7 i mean that will be um, a blunder so accordingly for every subject the content has to be tailor made for the uh, group the sequence of the thoughts how do we sequence out our thoughts what is how or what should come first what should come second and this sequence of thoughts comes largely in content driven subjects where you need to think out uh, how to how to um, design your content what will come first if if for example you are talking of earth what what will you give first will you give the shape of the earth first will you define what the earth is what is the place value of earth in the universe or what will you give it that is important and then comes the page layout once you have your content in place you have your question answers in place your testing in place then you will look at the page layout what will appeal to the child we've already dealt a little bit with this when we were talking about the art works the page layout um i mean uh, there has to be a divide there has to be a divide uh, uh, is it 60 40 or is it 70 or is it 70 30 i mean you can't um, you can't have a very standard uh, definition that well you will have a 60 40 divide between text and visuals or a 70 30 divide that will depend on your on your uh, on your client group naturally at a, at a at a lower level there will be more artworks because it has to be very visually attractive to to the young learners but as you go higher up the levels your artworks will become more maybe a um, one composite artwork you uh, you know uh, you may reduce the total number of colors which are used then comes the assessment part how 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 are you going to uh, test i've already mentioned spoken a bit about it what are the different um, uh, um, types of questions that you would want to put into um, in your in your uh, in your books you have to have a variety um on this again we need to go back to the bloom's taxonomy the bloom's taxonomy speaks of uh, speaks of a movement upwards of a hierarchy of hierarchy even in the testing order so it will have to move up from knowledge to comprehension to application and finally to skills right so there has to be a progression what would be a knowledge based question something like simple recall that how many sons did the king have it is quick recall that's a knowledge based understanding discuss what you understand by this that is an understanding which will it will be one step it will be knowledge plus that you to answer that question you have to know the the topic at hand and you will have to give your own understanding what will be an application question be like okay the application question will be something like have you seen have you seen let's say it's on rocks how many types of rocks have you seen around you list them list them and tell us what they are are they sedimentary rocks are they volcanic rocks what are they right and finally what is the skill that make a make a project out of it right put in all your all your understanding about this topic in a project that will be the skills and the assimilation part which will be the highest form of testing whatever has been taught then comes the language part 
like i said the language well this will be largely uh, 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 a, a content um, driven subject matter um, because in language uh, of course in in languages also the language part has to be there in 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 elt and in hindi and uh, subjects like that um we cannot use a uh, very um, difficult language in the textbooks they have to be very very child friendly and uh, but uh, but this language part comes in more for uh, content driven subjects where the language has to uh, be appropriate for the child but having said that having said that uh, uh, the language while language editing the editors need to um a need to be careful not to upset the um, the basic flavor of the uh, of the subject because every subject has its own flavor and in language editing you cannot upset that and lastly in today's world it's very important to reach a balance in between the digital and the print divide how much do we put in digital and how much do we put in print that is very very important uh, typically school books were largely print but with the development of digital world with the development of the electronic world and with the expansion in the electronic um, uh, market electronics market um education technology in education has come to occupy a very important place uh technology not only has come to occupy an important place it is it has become an integral part of uh, of education so what earlier we used to have just as audio visual aids cassettes and cd roms now we have moved beyond all of that there are uh, we have online support um we we have online support and a, a whole lot of other um digital media support systems in place to to facilitate learning so publishers need to uh, school books and publishers need to uh, take a very cautious position on what will really work because uh, it is important to be very cautious to tread this digital and print divide because it is uh, because uh, there are benefits of the books you cannot replace your teachers there is an advantage in face to face teaching and books in in themselves have an advantage they stimulate creativity they stimulate imagination um which in the digital world uh, dies very fast uh, and also it, it is difficult to hold a child's retention only through the digital medium it is important for the child to imagine to daydream to 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 understand the rhythm of words or to silently read and to find out meanings for themselves so we need so the digital print divide is very is a very complex issue which is um, which uh, is which bothers many these days and we need to tread very carefully uh, on it in so far as uh, school products are concerned now the way forward uh from here naturally we are in very testing times we also have the government of india has brought out the national education policy 2020 the way forward would be we uh have to fall back on the education policy requirements for all matters concerning uh school books we are yet to we understand that the uh, ncert will revise its guidelines will revise the national curriculum framework uh which uh, um, you know which in in the, in the light of the national education policy 2020 and once that is done uh there will be clearer mandate on 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 how school books will look and then maybe we will have to then maybe we will be clear about a lot of the issues which have been bothering us how much of technology how much of uh, uh how much of content etc uh will be there 
and especially now that we are in the post covid 19 situation where things are opening up schools are yet to open up um this year has been a washout um so we we are waiting to see how a new definition of classrooms and teaching learning strategies my gut feeling is that well there will be a very fine balance between the print and the digital um so there will be digital support enormously so school books will look different um for for all you know we may have we may have let's say um, you know stuff like storytelling we may have a lot of assessment and support materials coming up in a large way on the digital platform but i do not um visualize that print books will uh, will uh, will die away because as long as our examinations are written print books will be there to stay and we have such a huge workforce of teachers who do such a fantastic job um school books will be there but we are yet to find out how those will uh, evolve in the in the uh, new situation but definitely we will be we are looking at the ncert presently on new uh, curriculum guidelines vis-a-vis the new education policy 2020 and we're yet to see how the markets respond to this fantastic uh, business called school books so thank you sir thank you all for listening um, if there is any, if you have any questions which we might like to discuss i'm open to it <coughs> thanks soma for a very interesting presentation and for sharing your experience with us and now the participants they can ask their questions they can unmute and ask whatever they want to ask i saw divya taking some notes so maybe she will have some questions i'm just like this no sir no questions for me okay okay the big uh, michelle here yeah, i'd like to ask yeah yeah sure uh soma i had a question on see i i edit uh, language and literature school, uh, school books language and literature so, uh, social studies mm. and computer mm. books yes um, i i find particularly uh, for the language and literature uh, for the literature books on average the books have about 16 to 22 uh, chapters mm. i'm talking about uh, maybe up to the 8th uh, grade and uh, i i think that uh, uh, you know there's not enough time for teachers to delve into a language reading comprehension uh, the focus is more on on completing a chapter and uh, is there any thought uh, of reducing the number of chapters to give teachers more time with each lesson my second question is also related to it with regard to comprehension yeah uh i uh, uh, maybe you have a better idea of this than me i don't think lessons are read in class whether it is uh, it's very perfunctory in terms of reading a paragraph uh, getting into it getting a child to understand the meanings of the words and nuances and language and why the character reacted in a particular way you know those kind of things and uh, that i feel also affects students as they grow older there's a uh, grasp of what you're reading doesn't come quickly because there's no practice in reading comprehension in school i see that with adults even working individuals they can't grasp material quickly because school students don't pay attention to reading comprehension uh and that part of it is is a bit difficult to inculcate in uh in the questions that you would put into a particular chapter so what are your thoughts on that one in terms of reducing the content uh, per book as well as uh, Uh, paying more attention to reading comprehension was uh, in the terms of the assessment material yeah uh, can you hear me michelle michelle you can hear me yes i can yes i can yeah as as of the content 
well that depends purely on the uh, on the uh, on the, on the, on the on the publisher how much the content uh, how much the publisher wants to put it but i i think you mentioned about the number of pages um typically uh, i think what you're talking about uh, uh, are, are stuff like you know, supplementary readers right where you have more of reading input so uh, um, uh, you know when a book goes to print it is in forms of eight it means that they have to be multiples of eight in the book so uh, if if uh, so typically we i think uh, i mean although there is no uniform number but what normally happens is uh, you know for such supplementary readers the the books are very slim you you will not find them beyond let's say um uh, uh, maxima i mean you know depending on the level let's say class 1 2 3 they be very slim uh, maybe uh, about 30 34 36 kind of uh, pages very well laid out and stuff like that all right um but that depends entirely on the publisher how thick or thin the, he he or she wants the books to be uh that's entirely up to the publisher on the on the on on the uh, on the client deal that he's uh, dealing with and so on and so forth as of reading yes it is a problem it is a problem uh it's, it's a problem these days and uh, people don't want to read because there is so much of visual medium which is far more attractive and and which gives you the solution because uh it's it's very difficult to to get across the message that reading is a whole lot of cognitive uh, uh ability um it's uh, i mean i wish the teaching community would also understand this that it's not a quick fix solution reading is a whole lot of decoding coding and decoding which which happens so it is a very complex activity which only happens when you start reading and deciphering the meanings and the codes i mean after all what is a word it's a it's so many sounds put together and so it's a whole lot of it's a whole lot of coding and decoding every sound is a code every sound uh, brings to me brings to my mind a code it it conjures something so you're absolutely right the uh, the whole uh, this thing about i mean the 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 love for reading seems to be going down um however i would still see some light at the end of the tunnel because in 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 covid times i seem to find that there has been a um there, there has been an increase in the number of uh, uh people interested in storytelling uh so uh, you know there are a lot of people who are who are getting into storytelling story reading uh to just to get across this message that get back to books because books uh, are a therapy in themselves but i do share your concerns that yes there is a problem in in reading and um, well i'm not sure i do, i'm not sure if i have an answer but i do think that it has got to do with a lot with the visual medium which is uh, you know which is a booming market these days and so which is why well it it's 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 equally important to 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 bring that visual medium to integrate that visual medium um intelligently with uh, with school books yeah uh, thank you a, a curiosity um does the national education policy does it have anything on reading this um, this push towards reading hello um the national edge uh, specifically on reading i don't remember though there is a lot of focus or uh, i mean there the the, the takeaways from the national education policy are first of all that it integrates pre primary with school curriculum just as much as it leads right up to 11th and 12th so the ambit of school education has been increased starting from pre primary right up to uh, 11th and 12th which was 
not really so it's so that school system go through your middle school and right up to secondary and senior secondary so that is the uh chain that this uh, education policy has has established but i don't remember anything specifically on reading i i can get back to it and maybe on my private window i can uh, i can respond or or maybe on the icf group uh, there is all, yeah there is no i'm not sure i shall get back to it again uh there, there is also a lot of uh, stress on 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 integrating technology um uh, on using technology uh, meaningfully for educational purposes so all of that so these i thought were the main two trends uh, and of course examination reforms these were the three main takeaways which i thought Uh, were important as far as school uh, school education is concerned integrating yeah. pre primary and and the ncert already has their gu- guidelines in place on that so given the uh, problems we, that we experience sorry? you know that, uh, given the uh, problems that we understand that you know as teachers as educators that reading habit ha- i mean has really gone down uh, i would mm-hmm. suggest that uh, you have a hard look at the education policy i have not really gone into it okay i mean my feel is very different um i'll 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 look at it and maybe they just the government anything on so we can yeah oh <laughs> remember that we should have done earlier when they you know when they asked for public um, responses which was i think last year sometime 2019 i think they they had uh, circulated the draft for um, for the public but but let's wait for the ncert uh, to 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 come up with the curriculum framework guidelines maybe the ncert might have something i'm not sure we will be we just need to wait for that if by worry with technology is um, it might be more related to how you know things are presented and uh, yes and you know yes. It, it might be more like a game more engaging but i think the child has to actually you know start reading you know unless that is encouraged mm. um, yeah. we will still get you know seduced yeah. by the technology rather than really make use of it yeah you're right you're right you're right it uh, it largely acts as support still support still because we because we are still uh, because this is not a self instructional mode where you can leave everything to uh, to 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 technology and even self instruction has the uh, limitations it will work when the learner is slightly mature it it may not when the learner thank you welcome so do we have yeah ruchika uh, hi uh, hello everybody uh thank you shoma thanks a lot for uh, uh, giving us this wholesome idea of the uh, publication thing uh well about me i'm working with a few publishers there in india for k12 books uh, so i create questions maybe like sample papers and uh, sometimes chapters sometimes doing editing or the development letting basically as a subject matter expert so these kind of things i'm doing so uh, basically uh I- i'll ask my question later on but uh, just to add to venkat sir's uh, idea what he was saying i right now i am staying in uh, bangkok and my children are uh, studying in international schools uh, so both of them are with the igcse pattern that is cambridge uh, i mean the uh, uh, yeah. british pattern school so uh, what we need to do is to inculcate the re- re- reading habit right from the start that's what they do here like um the younger one my younger one is in uh, year 2 like uh, grade 1 in india so they have a book called reading book and you have to read books and there are like seven entries for one week so whosoever gets the mo- most entries he gets a stamp or he gets you know some encouraging points or something some dojo points or something so they are being encouraged at school level and uh, along with that we as parents we like regularly get mails about 
uh, how to be with your child while they are reading how to read with them so like in in my family we are very you know uh, reading oriented and all those things we all all of uh, us we love reading and we keep on reading so that has uh, you know inculcated but most of the families are not like that right so they have to be pushed so when these things come uh, into you know uh what to say like uh, as a as a daily business like you eat like you uh, you know watch tv like you reading has to be a part right from the very start so when you once push this one two years and then they get pushed so i don't know how it will happen in india <laughs> uh okay. see the there's a difference our indian society is very heterogeneous it's not homogeneous and that and that uh that actually may be uh, a the problem the 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 kind of society that you are talking about is is very homogeneous but ours is not ours is a very heterogeneous uh, society but i come so from- so you while these kind of uh, these kind of things that you're talking about may be may be happening in some in some of the very high end schools in 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 this country i'm sure if you go to let's say uh, to um, to rishi valley schools for example okay or to let's say um, schools like uh, pathways that right in 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 every, in, 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 every yeah. curriculum should guide that you know, so, that, that's what the need is right right but the point is but the point is that you see the your the if the homogeneity comes also because of the generation learner that you are dealing with when i say heterogeneous learners you will find in 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 our kind of indian situation uh, you may just find um, you know uh, first generation and a third generation are sitting next to each other all right it's not that all the learners may be second or third or fourth generation learners so that is why so there is also like the things you are saying about parents it is important for parents also to understand but that will also come uh, you know with that level of exposure to 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 uh, to a whole lot of things most of the parents are yes, Ill, so the, we are still uh, struggling with the literacy rates in india so that's that's a big problem yeah. okay so, so ours is a very heterogeneous and and we're still an evolving society right we are we are a very very evolving society and that's and 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 that's our beauty and that's our challenge yeah right you know so to my question so that is why uh, of course and of course i do agree i do agree that that yes reading has come down reading has come down again i mean uh, because children these days are, are more inclined to to seeing things um, visually than than reading up it is it's it's a it's a fact and which is why i mean i mean uh, 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 i wouldn't like to make a statement but yeah but around me i do see a lot of interest in in in, in reading clubs huh there are there are uh, you know there are uh, p- people who are starting who have started reading clubs activity clubs and like i said there is a lot of interest in story reading story elts need and people are doing what they can and and uh, these reading clubs and uh, storytelling sessions story reading sessions interestingly are being done by uh, by mothers who might have you know left corporate jobs who are very educated they, you they know, and uh, they 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 understand a uh, needs and they understand uh, story books you know who have had a very good uh, upbringing themselves and they're spreading it around hmm? it is it is it is a problem yes it is so uh, my question is now <laughs> coming back uh, well say uh, there are already books for example uh, take icsc board they have already books for say class 6 7 and 8 9 10 whatever they have already course books or what do you say the text books right now some publisher and an author maybe a publisher comes up with a new book so what what value addition maybe an author is supposed to do because the books are already available 
the guidelines are all already the same there is no much revision if if it's a revision then i understand but if it's not a revision what value addition can an author or editor or subject matter expert can put into developing another book another book so that is my question right so it would be uh, the value addition would would depend on uh, would would depend on what what the publisher wants um uh the value addition obviously you can't change the syllabus you have right. to follow the syllabus right. but for example if it is yeah so if it is let's say something to on 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 business studies for example i think igcse does have business studies at the school level so if it is let's say something to do with currency right currency as a topic so currency as a topic it will depend on you as a writer how you want to present it within the um framework that uh, that the igcse uh, course outlines so so you need not follow the old book it is for you to to churn out the content in your own way and that will be your innovation you may look at the existing book uh for ideas you may and you may form your own impression of uh what is good and what might have been better and accordingly uh, improve upon it because naturally you will lend your personality to your book right right yeah. the other author would have lent his personality to the book but you will lend your personality and you will weave your values and your ideals into your book so depending on change of style change of style how to put yeah. the thing yeah thank you shoma thank you absolutely 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 books are very author driven at yeah. the end of the day and that's the tussle between authors and uh, on and and editors to retain how much to retain of the author voice uh purnima shekhar would like to answer the question that dr venkat had asked so purnima you can unmute yourself and go ahead uh yeah good afternoon everyone can you hear me yes yeah see uh, all said and done uh, we uh, i would like to say he was focusing on the reading aspect of uh, learning now reading is something that is you see unfortunately in our country i'll come, i'll first talk in the context of our country because we are our students our schools are so driven by evaluation so uh, as uh, having been in teaching field for the past 45 years i found that we can make it interesting by putting it as a part of evaluation now we used to have projects which were evaluated so that they are you know they they are marks driven all said and done we cannot um, bypass the psychology in our country about marks so what we were do was as part of some of the evaluation we would say at the end of this week you have to read a book or read a story or something and uh, a, a, you know you know the, uh, it, it's up to the creativity of the teachers to uh, develop some kind of a testing thing on their own reading so you see because print i, I can see that some have written about the uh, reading on the tech you getting used to technology and read books on online but uh, how many students in our country can do that so i, I remember teaching some of my washman children so you know we would give them some small story books and say okay now you're going to tell me something something etc etc but this is just a private thing but in schools what we tried was that they would be told that look what you do for this based on your reading you will have to um, your marks will be counted now immediately they are alert to this work so that's one way of doing uh, you know encouraging the reading part of the students the next part is the teachers because unfortunately uh, i had a discussion with shoma once that uh, we really need to do something about the teachers or the teacher training so again teacher training had become to a large extent very uh, you know uh, falling back on just what they have read, read or just deliver the text from cover to cover so that is not what the teachers are expected to do according to me because they have to go beyond the text although the cbse having worked with cbse they expect you as a teacher to go beyond it 
not just because I, I live in Bangalore now and I have observed many teachers, they believe in just cover to cover, delivering it, whatever is there in the text. So again, we have to train the teachers, whether as a principal of the school or whether as the HOD of your school or whatever subject you're dealing with, more creativity. For example, a teacher who was doing uh, economics in the school, she made them actually study the stock market before teaching what it is. You see, so there a lot goes into the teacher's creativity also. The role of teachers is very, very needed. I mean, how they are able to use the text and go beyond it. The third thing I would talk about authors. Now, I have been working as author with Macmillan and uh, Shoma and uh, so many others uh, who are in this chat. See, authors also, again, as uh, Shoma rightly put it just now at the end, that it's the author's, ultimately, is the author's presentation, uh, something to that effect. So authors are just, they're presenting you something as a guideline to the teacher. Now, the teachers expect, nowadays, teacher manual. Now, we as teachers, 45 years back, never had teacher's manual. We had to think up, think up, think up how to present this chapter. Maybe I can show, if it's a 10th standard, you show them a video of uh, Mark Antony's speech. And that gets them interested also. So you see, you have to go beyond the text. And we can't just stick to, because this is my observation uh, of a lot of teachers when I was observing classes, that they just stick, hold on to the book like a Bible. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> they're literally, so you can't develop reading habits in that. Because a lot of families may not be having that kind of an environment where um, you know, reading is uh, so much encouraged. But then the moment I, I, I found the weak spot is that, yes, it is part of the school testing. It, it makes a lot of difference. So I hope I've just uh, given you some points for that. The NEP, yes, it, it does focus because that is where the skill is developed. I mean, it, it does talk about reading where you talk about ELT and the skills in the ELT. So uh, now going beyond, even in other subjects, it applies. Because if you're reading geography and you say sedimentary rocks, OK, find out which are the mountains which are uh, sedimentary. So you see, they have to read. So you have to take them beyond it, right? Yeah, thank you. I, I don't know. I've just put it in short as much as I could. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thanks, Purnima. Yeah, I'd like to you know, just say a few words you know, what Kotima said. I'll just talk about based on, you know, my experience with my daughter. Uh, so, see, we're talking about reading. And this has to start from home. Number one, the parents have to be involved. Okay. Yes. And yes. Uh, first is, okay, I have to confess that I was not involved. My wife was involved. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> see, but I know that this uh, may not happen, uh, you know, in every house in India. As you said, it's a very heterogeneous group. Uh, but more than that, you know, children reading, see, what I've observed my daughters is you, you know, introduce them to reading storybooks and that slowly, you know, um, moves over to reading subjects. It, it's not that they, you know, you ask a child to start reading subject book, they will find it difficult. They will definitely find it difficult. Okay. So you have to. Um, get them interested into the you know habit of reading, and that will be only through stories, okay, and stories and pictures and all that, okay. And uh, once that habit picks up, I think they will you know, extrapolate that, extend it to subject books, and that's what I've seen. Uh, what do you think, uh, Soma? Uh, True. Charity no, it may not home. begin at home because of the situation in India. But, you know, if teachers can uh, sit and read with the students, either, you know, in batches or something like that, will that help? It might. Yes, uh, it might. I would like to uh, kind of barge in here that, yes, you have reading circles in schools. Um, you call them as group reading. So each, each group, I mean, these are all the strategies I'm telling that each group works on a different story and then uh, they have to discuss it. So you see, it again comes back to how the teacher handles it in the class because reading may not start at home, may not. <coughs> for, <coughs> sorry, for all you know that both the parents may be illiterate. Yeah. 
and therefore it's again the honors lies on the teacher so again and we go back from there to teacher training you see so that's where we are, are as policy makers as as a part of education system we all have to evolve as both as teachers as well as policy makers as well as trainers everything so uh, at least to this extent we can say that reading if it has to be at school again there are different methods where we say just as you said you know like you make uh, groups circles they call we call them as uh, reading circles so in that advantage is that one may not be very good at um, you know reading or something the others who are uh, so you have to make the groups in such a way that it's a mix of the good ones and the the, the one weak ones right so that's how i'm saying the strategies have to be adopted by the teacher to encourage reading and also as i said uh, i remember doing a workshop where the teacher asked me but then what do we do how do you find the time to for extra reading because that was a library activity so yes that make make it part of the assessment and they won't even know that it's assessment yeah so and then of course it has to begin very early um because till the children learn to touch the books feel the books and that starts very young so even if the two parents are illiterate maybe some of these libraries some of them at least they can go and see what these books are so you see the curiosity for books has to start very early it doesn't matter which subject yeah madhavan does say you know the print medium is still considered the best for immersive reading world over so thanks thanks everyone for your comments and active participation and uh, <clears throat> we will see you next week at 11 am the session will be on reference styling and dr venkat will be presenting that session and in the saturday interview series we will have surit das in conversation with murugraj so those are the two sessions you can look forward to towards the end of this month so thank you thanks soma and thanks to all the participants and have a nice day